Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions. And so today's question comes in from a user and it's all about interview questions for machine learning engineers. So if you're a machine learning in engineer, what are some of the topics that you should be comfortable in and be able to answer when you walk into the interview? What kind of information should you know about the company? And generally, like, what are some concepts that I need to be able to maybe whiteboard or really explain in depth that are gonna help me in the interview process? Because the fact is, it can't know everything, right? But you can know some base level conversation points and I'll show you even how to look into the job application and decide, okay, what are the relevant points and where should I turn my focus and my study for my interview? So find out more right after this. So welcome back. Today's question comes in from a user on my website. So thomashenson.com forward slash big questions. Go there, you can submit questions and I'll answer them here on the show. Um, so the question comes in today says, Hi Thomas, hope you're doing well. I've watched some of your YouTube videos which are very useful and fun to keep up. Please, my question is, how can I prepare myself for an interview? Well, that's a great question. He says, I'm a fresh engineering student with no experience. However, I do have a background in machine learning, neural networks, and image processing with Python. Well, man, that's, that's really awesome. That's some awesome background right there. I'm going to get into that. But uh, this is a common question, right? So, you, you know, whether you're fresh out of school, whether you're looking for your new role, you're moving, you know, moving into the next phase of your career, you want to find out, okay, hey, I've got this interview set up. What should I be prepared for? And so I'm going to break it down into three key points. I'm going to talk about the things that you should know about the company first. I'm going to talk about the things that you should know about the interviewer. And then at the end, I'm going to go through some concepts on, hey, how you should whiteboard, how you should practice for some of the questions that you're probably going to have. The first thing that you want to do is you want to have a strong understanding around the company. And by that, I mean where you're applying for, the group, organization, wherever wherever you're trying to apply, do some base level information gathering. So go out, find information about the company, uh, look on, you know, just a quick Google with uh, the news app, and then go through and click the news and find some information about what's going on. You really want to focus on if there's anything that you can find from a perspective of maybe they have a front face facing blog about some of their technology or any of the groups that you're getting into, find out any information you can find out there just to show. I mean, it's, the company's doing research on you, so it's fair for you to do research on the company, right? You want to be informed and know what's going on with the company. This will, one, make you a more informed and show that you're paying attention and that you're taking the, this process seriously. And it also gives you an opportunity to evaluate the company. Because remember, it's not just you that's being evaluated. You're evaluating, hey, is this a group? Is this a team? Is this a place where I want to learn and be a machine learning engineer? Next. I think it's important to find out the team that you're going to be on or who's going to be interviewing you in this process and find some information about them. So, you know, if there's any way, you know, a lot of times you'll be CC'd on the information about, hey, we're going to schedule you, you're going to be meeting with this person. It's fully okay for you to go out and look for that person on Twitter, LinkedIn, find some information about them. A really key point here is if you can tie it back to some of the research you were doing before on the company. So a lot of times, you know, depending on the area that you're interviewing, there's research blogs that you can kind of go through. So if your interviewer has to, happens to have a couple blogs, I'd, I'd definitely take some time and look at those. Or maybe the team you're applying for has those. So if you go out there and you look at Uber and Netflix, a lot of those companies out there, they have team blogs about what they're doing from a data science perspective, a data engineering, a machine learning engineering. Read some of those blogs, find out the technologies that they're using, find out what interests people on that team, and that'll make you more prepared in the interview. And then also it'll help you in the third part of our getting ready for your interview phase, which is gonna be finding out the basic concepts that you need to be able to understand and know going through the interview process. So the first thing is, when you're figuring out what concepts to do, make sure that you're looking at the job rec or the job description that you're looking for, pull out some of those big name concepts. You know, are they using Python? Are they using Hadoop? Is it Spark? You know, have they mentioned Cafe? Have they mentioned TensorFlow? Have they mentioned PyTorch? Know which concepts those are. That can help you determine what do I need to focus on? Because the real truth is, right, everybody cannot be an expert on everything in every field. Like that's why we you know, that's why we have specializations. That's why there's different pieces. So once you know the position that you're applying for, I would go through and I would find some high level concepts that I can whiteboard. I like to whiteboard. I feel like it gives you more confidence when you stand up there in front of everybody. So if you think about it, you walk into a room 
And you're talking about a concept. If you can stand up and you're, you know, all the focus is on you, it kind of gives you that, um, that ability to really take the conversation in a different way that you want. But it also gives you respect because you're the, res- you're, you're the presenter. So there's just something about sitting down and watching somebody whiteboard where, hey, you know, that person is, you know, kind of driving this conversation and taking it. So, you know, it kind of takes you a step up. Now, you still need to be able to whiteboard those concepts really well, right? You need to be able to show. So with your background, my my recommendation would be, hey, you've already got a background in image classification um, and then also something around neural networks. Like I would take through and make sure that I could, you know, whiteboard how an application or how um, you're gonna use a neural network. So be able to put, you know, your input layer, your hidden layer and the output layer and then be able to talk about forward propagation and backward propagation, be able to show those concepts. Because, I mean, as you're going through that, you know, that's showing your ability to understand the concepts. Also, I would look for some high level architecture uh, conversation. So if you're looking for more of a data engineering role, you've heard me talk about it before, but being able to whiteboard out what the Kappa architecture is or a batch or a speed layer, just having an overall concept of how different components come in. And so not only from an architecture perspective, but being able to say, hey, this is how Hive and Spark and some of these other packages play together. You can do the same thing for machine learning engineers, right? You can, you can, be, able to ten, you know, you can be able to whiteboard out how your TensorFlow project is going to work and how you're going to push, push that out. And so you can talk about, hey, this is what we're going to do through the training phase. And then you can also come back and say, you know, for inference, this is how we see it, see it kind of projecting. So I hope you're kind of understanding a little bit of how to approach the problem, because I don't believe there's a standoff like, hey, this is the specific application or this is the specific thing that you need to be able to whiteboard. I don't think those exist. You'll find a lot of those ideas out there and you'll see some common themes if you're talking about the coding per se whiteboard and some of the other some some of those other problems. But just being able to practice, being able to be on that whiteboard will give you the confidence in that room. So one other tip about about it. Practice, practice, practice. You want to make sure that you've, this is not the first or even the second time that you've jumped on a whiteboard whenever you get into the meeting. You're already going to be nervous. You're already going to be in an environment that's different that probably you've never even sat in. So go ahead and practice it so that you know that you're, you know, you can, you can walk through the whiteboard. You know where those components go. Now you're still going to be nervous. You're still going to make mistakes and that's okay. But having that confidence inside that, hey, I know this portion of it. This is where I can kind of control and really show myself to shine that'll all make you feel a whole lot more comfortable and it'll come off to all the people that are interviewing you too. So that's all I have today for Big Data Big Questions. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them. Until next time, see you again.